now that we have seen how to build a data set using data set builder and using recipes to uh, add derived fields or possibly add some more data sets together we're going to go through some of the best practices when creating data sets and kind of understand a little bit deeper what's the lowest grain what's the lookup and the difference between lookup and joins so we talked about building data sets in general as the first essential step on your way to create dashboards and stories and so forth and we typically use a data set builder or we just grab a uh, you know digest node or something similar to create that first data set or at least call that uh, the data um, and we can add transformations aggregations using recipes for example and merge that data set together now the data layer in a plus as you have seen in includes several tools um, whether the connect the sync data set builder data flows and even data prep um, and that is just to allow the users to use a mix of these tools to reach the final uh, required uh, data set in what follows we're going to talk about like i mentioned the best practices and kind of to distinguish between what is a lookup when you can use it the joints that are typical in the SQL world and what is specific to the data set what we usually call um, or designate as the lowest grain. So when we build a data set we start with the particular object we are talking about. Now again I'm talking about the objects in Salesforce but this applies to external data the same concept. We are talking about what is this data set about so mainly it's about opportunity. I grab opportunity I grab the related uh, upper uh, objects and fields, for example, which account this opportunity belongs to, who owns it, and so forth. Same thing for cases and accounts. And it is recommended to add all the related fields slash related objects. So when you create that data set that is about opportunity, it has all the related, again, fields from those uh, objects. This is very important if you're going, going to leverage something like connect data sources on the dashboard or even for join purposes or lookup purposes uh, that relate to adding data together or data sets together. Now we've seen the, uh, the typical exercise of creating the opportunity data set. So again, as a reminder, it might look something like this. You start with opportunity as the root, that is the lowest grain. That means every record in this data set is going to be a unique opportunity, hence why we call it the lowest grain. We started from here. Typically in a data set builder, you are using what we call a lookup. A lookup will go from one opportunity and grab the one matching record from account and get the information of that account to the opportunity level. Same thing to the owner of the opportunity and a a little bit difference here from the first exercise we've seen in the series I'm adding the owner of the account itself uh, of the record itself so same concept it's a lookup so pretty much what I'm trying to emphasize on here is when you start with this object if you have 1000 records here you are pretty much going to get 1000 records in the end and the data flow might look something like this. Uh, again, as we move to the new prep or the uh, uh, you know, recipe 3.0, or if you're using recipes, uh, you might see a, a little bit of a different UI, but pretty much a similar concept that we have the nodes and we are augmenting or connecting the data with the final resulting data set right here. So these relationships are pretty much our augments or single lookups. Um, mentioning single lookups to distinguish between the single lookups which bring back the one matching record versus the multi value lookup which is not going to be to, not going to be covered in this particular topic but within the series this youtube playlist if you go to video 19 we talk uh, uh, extensively about what's multi value lookup how we can leverage it and again in this particular uh, chapter or video we are talking about the single lookup meaning I am only bringing one matching record for the opportunity or for the lowest uh, object in this case opportunity to that final data set and this is what we usually mention as it's the grain or the level the grain level of the data set so if I look at the data set if I didn't design it one of my first question would be to ask or at least to deduce what is the grain level what is the unique 
uh, ID or unique uh, records in this data set. Now, if, if no one is there or there's no documentation to uh, provide that information, a simple thing you could do is, if you go to a lens perspective, is just do a unique of that particular ID that you suspect that is the grain level and the count of rows. So if your count of rows in this data set is 700, let's say, and you do, you do a unique uh, count of, or it's called unique of opportunity ID, it's also 700, that means the grain level or the lowest grain uh, of this data set is opportunity indeed. Now, if we follow our exercise here, um, again, this would be a sample of the data set. If I explore it, these are my opportunity records. And if I do a quick exploration, I'm going to get count of rows, sum of amount, certain number. So if I go and see an actual number right here, this is my opportunities, let's say, that we've built. And I have, you know, the different records. If I go do a quick count of rows, sum of amount, I can see that, let's say in this case, it's 674. That's count of rows. I am, I am sure that this is 674 unique opportunities because that is the grain. And if I, if someone asks me about the amount, let's say there's no filters or stages, just a general amount, I'm confident to say it's 783 million because there, there is no duplication of any record. And this is very important in the discussion when we go to the different join uh, results. So again, keep that in mind. The data set has a specific grain. It's easy to be defined. And if I do a quick measure, count of rows, sum of amount, I'm pretty sure that that is the correct one that I'm looking for, the correct numbers or the correct values. Let me just close these a bit, go back to the slides. So now let's consider a scenario where I am augmenting, I am adding to the, uh, the opportunity to the account. In this case, let's say there's a requirement where someone's asking, I want, I have these accounts and this is just a sample filtered and I want to bring the opportunities to these accounts. Now from a typical SQL or maybe operation reports, one might think that, okay, accounts, you know, I'm starting with the left. I have uh, Abbott 358, I have Adams, Atkins, Aguilar, I have four records here and the matching opportunities on the right right here I have opportunity McLaughlin for example I have a 358 that's one Atkins has three opportunities right here I can see them sorry two opportunities two opportunities and Aguilar has three opportunities and one of the things that one might think and go do first is go and do a quick uh, what we call accounts lookup. So start with accounts and try to bring opportunities. Well, the issue here is, and again, as you can see from the screen, we had one 358, one opportunity, okay, matching, but Adams had, uh, sorry, Adams had nothing, by the way. So we can see there's no opportunities here. Atkins 907 has two records and Aguilar has three records, so that, that the count should be three opportunities and the sum of these amounts. But if I go and do simple accounts lookup op, I can see that the result is not matching what I'm expecting. What I'm finding is the ABBA 358 went to the other opportunity, which just for coloring right here, this is from opportunity, let's say, and it found the first record brought it in. Adams went to look for any matching record and opportunity. I mean. You know, pretty much the record, we found nothing, so it's null, zero. Atkins brought only one opportunity, Lewis 258. I'm supposed to bring uh, Lewis 258 and Morton 591. So the second one did not get brought in. Similarly, for Aguilar 870, I only got a record. And the reason for that is the lookup. So let me, let's go and take a look here. This is a recipe. I'm doing a quick lookup from accounts that sample account that I had uh, to opportunity and I can see that um, using this particular lookup um, this is not the result that I'm looking for so you should not do an account which is a higher grain it's a higher than opportunity look up, look up to a lower data set opportunity in this case you you should not do again from a single lookup perspective you should not do a higher grain account single lookup to a lower grain, you will get the wrong results. All right. 
This is why, again, we have to be very careful with lookups. We stress a lot when you start um, you know, building a data set and you want to start, you, you want to use lookups, matching one record. You want to start with the lowest grain, with the lower object, so keep that in mind. Like I mentioned, there are other resolutions or solutions. If you want to use, um, you know, the multi-value, we talked about it. If you want to use uh, connect data sources for, you know, instead of combining them on the data layer, those two data sets, you want to leave them as is and use connect data sources or even some cycle, you can check the chapters in this playlist uh, uh, series too, and you can find those uh, you know, different uh, solutions. But we're still focusing on just for now, understanding what the lookup, how it runs, then talk, we talk about the lowest grain and, and, uh, um, and the lowest grain in a data set, and we're gonna talk about joins in the next part. As a summary, keep in mind, data set builder always starts with the lowest grain, it is okay to build these what I'm calling base level data sets. So when you go into an environment, you're gonna take a, a look at your main objects and you're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna have to build uh, you know, X number of base level data sets, one about opportunity, one about cases, one about campaigns, and one about accounts and so forth. And then you're gonna try to figure out how to combine them if you need to combine them on data layer or leave it to the dashboard layer. Um, data set builder can help you understand the relations. So there's a way, let's say you start with a, uh, a higher grain and then you try to add, uh, you know, another object. And if you can't see that, that, you know, in the lookup, that means you started at the high grain, you can't see it in the list. For example, if you pick account and you go look to join or to add opportunity, you're not going to see in data set builder. So it kind of helps you understand where, what, what level you're starting with, especially if you don't understand or you were not, um, you know, you don't have documentation about how this, these uh, objects are being created in the environment, again, specifically with custom objects, for example. So I, a few diagrams to illustrate this. Um, you might have seen this before, but again, just to, good to remind ourselves, if we're looking at this environment where we have products, opportunity, account, and user, I have four objects here and I need to build, let's say, a dashboard about opportunities or dashboard about products. In general, how many data sets I will end up with in this scenario. Remember the, the one thing I said about base data set, baselines, and bring whatever you can from the upper uh, level. So if you look at this, I will end up with four possible data sets, base data sets, one starting with products. I pull opportunities, pull account, and pull user. I'll call it product opties or product data set. Then I will start with another one, opportunities, pull account and user, and then build one just accounts and one just users. The reason, let's take opportunity for example. If I start with opportunity and pull the account, because it's a single lookup and lookup in general, I will only bring the accounts that have opportunities because I'm starting from here. So only the matching records, only accounts that have opportunities will be brought. So for a dashboard that's about opportunities, the green data set is fine. But if next day or some other user say, I want to see all of my accounts, whether they have opportunities or not, then this green data set is not going to be enough. And I will have to go and just build a data set around the account by itself. Okay. And similarly, typically when we add cases, cases will be a fifth data set. Cases that goes back to users, to the owner, to which account that will be its own data set. To not, so notice at this stage, I am not typically worried about having to combine everything in a data set. I'm looking at my objects, at my data, in a sense of okay, which um, what themes I need to create a, 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 a around them, my data set. So I have a product theme, product data set opportunity data set, case data set, account and user, and so forth. All right, now that we have kind of understood the uh, data sets builder, the base, uh, the lowest grain, um, let's talk about joins. And for that, I'm going to use three sample uh, data sets. The first one is opportunity, has four records. It uh, The first opportunity relates to an account one, opportunity two, account one, account two has one, 
Now this opportunity has no account. Typically you will not see this, um, uh, less, but less because every opportunity has to relate to an account. But let's say there's some data error here and I have no account here. And I have uh, first opportunity illuminations, silhouette lost, mighty echoes, and I have some amounts. The thing to take from this picture is I have, for account one, I have two opportunities. For account two, I have one opportunity and I have an orphan opportunity that is not relating to an account. All right, the second one is account, and I have only three, uh, three accounts. I have colors, dawn, ocean. I have some business unit account, let's say a sample. And again, that's a, this is unique, this is a higher level. I don't have duplicates, and again, three accounts. Remember, there's four opportunities, three accounts. Then I go to cases, and in cases, I have three cases again, but I have the first two, they belong to the same account, account one, time to run floating, and case three belongs to account three, silent cries. And again, some days, let's say, since they were open or something. So just as a recap, uh, again, I have the account, I have opportunities, two of them belong to the same account, and I have cases, two of them also belong to the same account, account one, and I have account three here. So now we are going to explore joins, the left, right, inner, the outer. And when we talk um, about joins in Einstein analytics in this particular scenario, we talk about the full uh, left, full right. That means we're gonna get all of the matching record, the duplicate records um, that as we're gonna see in, in a bit. But for simplicity, we're gonna call them just full, right, inner, and uh, left, okay. So we're going to start with the ops inner join case. So one might assume, okay, I have opportunities data set. I have cases data set. I have a requirement to bring them on the same dashboard. So I'm going to try to use inner join and get the data. Well, if you use inner join, as you can see, this is the result. And the result is saying that I started with opportunities. So I have all of my opportunities that are matching to cases based on account, right? So I have account ID and opportunities, and I have account ID in cases, and I'm gonna try to find the matching accounts and bring the results, opportunities, and cases. So if you recall, the first two opportunities belong, belong to account one. The first two cases belong to account one. Those are the matching records. But what's happening is for opportunity one, account one, it's going to cases and picking up both cases belonging to account one. Because account one and cases had case one and case two. So what I'm getting actually here on this side, I'm duplicating the record of the opportunity. So what's happening is the first time opportunity zero one goes to cases, bring the first one, but then finds that there's another one. So it repeats again. This is duplicate record of opportunities but it's bringing me case one and case two. Same thing is happening, but from the case perspective, right? So for the case, uh, sorry, for opportunity two, right? Opportunity, opportunity two also has account one, and again goes to cases, finds that case one and case two are with account one, and I end up again with four records, duplicating opportunity one and one, two and two, Amounts are duplicating, count of opportunities duplicating, and similarly in the case side. So I am finding the matching records, but there is some duplication. I am losing my lowest grain, my uniqueness of each record. In this case, these records are not necessarily unique. And by that, look at this record. For example, this is opportunity two, but it has case one. And this opportunity one has case one. So what I mean by unique is that some of the values are repeating. 432, 432 is repeating. 500 and 500 is, is repeating. And if you want to take a look at it quickly in recipes, so again, this is ops in a joint cases. And what I have here is if you look at it, I am using an inner join. I'm not using a lookup. And I can see that this is what's happening. I'm getting only the matching records in this case, but there is some duplication. So inner join is giving me the result, give me only opportunities and cases that have some match on the account, 
but there's some homework to do also or extra work because there's some duplication of the records. So that's for inner joint. If we do a left joint, which is a full left, like I mentioned, if I start with ops and go and get all the cases matching, then I'm going to keep all of the ops. So I had initially four ops. I have one, I have two, I have three and four, but I can also see some duplication happening here. And I'm getting all the cases that have matching ops, or let me rephrase this, I'm getting all the cases where the accounts from ops have matching in cases. So I'm bringing case one and case two because they're on account one. I'm bringing again uh, case one and case two because they match on opportunity two. I am keeping opportunity three and four, although they don't have any match. So that's the left. The left keeps everything from this side, left join, brings whatever matches on the right side, but there's some duplication if the records, you know, find more than a match. And that's a left join. So again, it's not exactly what I wanted. And again, if we take a look at it right here, this is simply a left join and it's giving me these. It's giving me the data, it's giving my ops and bring me whatever uh, of these ops uh, have cases. Uh, but there's again duplication and some homework to be done. Okay, so that was the left. If we go to the right, right is pretty much similar just from the cases perspective. So I'm going to keep all cases and whatever matches opportunities. Think about ops right cases is similar to cases left op. And again, I have all the all the cases and whatever uh, cases associated with ops, but the cases I have some duplication, so the numbers duplicate here and the counts too of cases. Now the, the last one in this case uh, is full outer join, and as expected, full outer should give me all the ops and all the cases, whether they match or don't. If they match on more than a record, then duplicate it like here, op1 repeats, because it has case one and case two. Two uh, repeats, it has again case one, case two based on account one. Op3, op4, nothing, but case three has nothing and keep it. So I'm getting everything. And then again, if I needed to report on this or do some dashboard or queries, etc., there will be some homework to kind of, um, you know, uh, not, not do any aggregate or duplicate uh, uh, duplication of some some of amount or days or counts. So keep that in mind. Now, as a reminder, if we were to do an ops single lookup to cases, we will only pick the first or actually it is a random but random uh, matching record. So I am keeping, and this is a big difference. Ops lookup. I am keeping the uniqueness. From the left, every record is a unique op, only the four ops, nothing repeating. I go to cases and bring the, again, not the first, typically you might see the first here, but you know, in, in theory, it should be any random record that's matching. So took op, account one, went to cases, found case one, brought it in. That's it. So case two is not being picked up here. And for opportunity to same thing, it went to cases, found the first match and brought it back. Again, this is the single lookup. For multi-value lookup, you can go check the other video, but that's an expected behavior of, of ops lookup. So again, if we look at the environment, again, we talked about the right join, the full outer join. And uh, if we go for the lookup cases, as I can see, I'm keeping the uniqueness here, but I'm not catching all the cases. So even in this case, the lookup does, is not the greatest fit. The single lookup is not the greatest fit between differing grain data sets. So this is up grain. This is case grain. A single lookup is not going to solve this by combining them together, right? So again, we're talking about the different ways we can approach this at the data layer at this stage. Now, there is a curious case. I'm just going to, you know, um, a fun name, curious case of the ops left join account. This actually gives me the correct results. And the reason is because there is only one matching record in accounts for each op. So each op in general should belong to one account. 
So if I start with ops, and in this case, I am starting with, with my ops right here. If I go to find the account name or account billing or whatever, based on the account ID, I should go and find only one record. My, my hire here should be, um, uh, in this case, it's only one, matching one record. So the ops left join accounts is actually very similar to ops lookup accounts. And again, the reason because this grain, although they are different grains, but this particular grain is unique in a sense to op. Each op will have only one matching account. And in this case, it kind of, again, is very similar to the lookup. Now, to amplify that um, what we just talked about, that the uh, the curious case of the ops left join account, if you notice the account left join op is going to be completely different, again, because the account is a higher grain. And what it means is for each account, I might have multiple ops. And if I do account left join, my each, one, each of my accounts is going to repeat by the number of matching ops. So if you look at this, I have account one has two ops immediately by looking at this. And I can see that it has two ops, illumination, silhouette. Uh, account two has nothing, uh, sorry, has uh, one. In this case, Dawn has opportunity three lost. Account three, Ocean has nothing and it got pulled again because it's left join. So again, account left join op is not, you know, from a not from a data perspective, not necessarily wrong, but it is messing the order, sorry, the number of records. So you can't do a simple count of account here or, you know, sum of business unit because there's some duplication. So bottom line is just you need to be careful when using joins to understand what is the left side, what is the right side, what, is, what are these data sets, what's the grain and so forth. Okay, so this is very important to understand and we have verified this with these samples. Um, now, since we have talked about both lookups and grains, so why, why the grain matters and the argument for the lookup approach, this is what I'm kind of uh, advocating for as best practices. It's okay, again, to build uh, those base level data sets that have a unique grain. As you have seen, there, the using the joins and the duplication of the records messes up the uh, direct exploration of the lens, meaning I cannot get a true count of rows or sum of amount or average of the metrics immediately because there is some duplication of the records. This can lead in the hands of non-experienced use end user or some end user who doesn't know uh, the, the again the duplication of these records to be misled by just doing some simple. Uh, exploration or calculation. So the lookups, again, are a better approach for those initial base data sets. This way you can make sure you have these data sets, they have their unique grain, and then you can enrich them by, uh, you know, for example, from other fields and so forth, but you can also use some multi-value lookups, uh, or you can leverage the connect data sources or even cycle or the query blending techniques on the dashboard to resolve that issue of having multiple data sets on the same dashboard. So an example, let's consider, in this case, we have a Rockstar user Frank and his data sets. So Frank is an end user exploring uh, the lookup based opportunity data set. So we have a data set based on opportunity. It's a unique grain. You can easily get the count of ops, total amounts, just by doing some simple explorations. And whether he's exploring on, a, on the data set itself or in the dashboard, clicking on the drop down, saying exploring that particular chart or widget. And anyway, he explores, he can see that the results should be correct and he can easily understand those measures. Now, let's take another scenario where Frank has another data set that was based on ops left join cases. It's called, let's say, ops and cases information. Remember, this data set has duplicate records. So when Frank goes and do a simple exploration or, uh, you know, count of ops or uh, sum of amount of ops, he's going to get the wrong numbers because there's a duplication of those records. And what the, the, the extra thing he will need to do is do some uh, additional group or compare table to actually get the correct results. So let me show you what I mean by simple illustration. This is the ops lookup account. 
unique records of ops. So if I do a count of rows or sum of amount by a count, for account one, I get 1.5. For account two, I get 250. These are the correct numbers. 500 plus 1,000 from our example, account two, 250. Correct. But if I use the other data set, the one that is based on the ops and cases, and I want to do, um, for example, uh, you know, the amount per account, it's not straightforward. In this exa example, I might need to do a, an account ID and a name and then average name of the opportunity, average of the amount to get the right, uh, you know, amount. And in this case, notice they're not even um, in the same, on the same bar. I need to visually add them, right? Or it could be a complicated scenario where you're using compare tables. So let me just really quickly switch back to the lenses. Um, so as a recap, we talked about, uh, so this is just a simple exploration. Like I mentioned, this is an opportunity based on the lookup. Let's go back to this example in particular here. So I have a account one, account two. I have 1.5, like I mentioned, it's 1,500, and I have 250. If I went to the cases, ops and cases, it's a little bit different. I need to group by account ID. Remember, that's duplicating. Then I need to group by opportunity name. Now I have the correct amounts I have 500 for illuminations, 1,000 for silhouette, and I'm doing an average, not a, not a sum, because remember, these are uh, duplicating. Again, I have two illuminations, I have two silhouette, so that number will be wrong. So if I do just a quick sum, just to show you, the sum is not going to be correct. I have 1K and I have 2K. So that means there's two rows of silhouette, two rows of illumination, four rows of account one, and that's what we saw in our ops left joint cases. Another approach could be, just to show you another one, uh, could be to go to group by account ID, but then you go to sum of amount as a compare table, 3000 duplicate, you get the unique of name, unique count of opportunities, and then you do a division. So you can see that the exploration is not straightforward. And that is why I repeat that using joins, they're powerful, but you need to understand that they will mess up the uh, data set grain level and that will affect if especially specifically the end users if they have the exploration option or they are exploring that data all right so what do we do if we are asked to have ops and cases on the same uh, dashboard or an accounts maybe and uh, when do you use the joint approach because they are there and they are powerful so my recommendation is if the the, the scenario here is to allow end users to explore data, or if there's a strong team, for example, handling data sets, supporting a wider user group, um, then it's a good approach absolutely to use the base data sets, the lookups, and you leverage other features. Example, the connect data sources on dashboard, where you have multiple data sets on the same dashboard, or linked dashboards, so you preserve that concept of this dashboard is about opportunities, with a little uh, information about cases. If you want that information about cases, you click on the link and go to cases and you know explore that based on the case uh, data set, for example. There's also, we mentioned the multi-value uh, um, uh, enrichment of some certain data sets. It works for accounts, uh, data set, uh, where you want to bring some information from ops aggregated, like total amount or total number of cases and so forth. You could also use some more advanced techniques like SACL or blending queries on the dashboard. And in this case, we preserve using base data sets, but we leverage other things like, like I mentioned, dashboard layer to kind of combine them and get the data. This is also very important when you work with Einstein discovery to build stories. Usually in most cases, the data sets that you build the story slash model on should have a unique non-repeating grain. Uh, let's say you're looking to predict the opportunities time to close or increase amount or customer churning. All of these mean data sets that do not have repetitive records. That's very important too. Now we can still use joint data sets, of course, um, but again, with great power comes great responsibility. So you have to understand that, you know, if I'm using joints, for, for example, uh, exploring data set is, might be disabled for end users, so, so they wouldn't use the wrong metrics. You might use that to create intermediate or complementary data sets where you have done your aggregations or joins 
and you're using them to enrich the dashboards or at least you know who's going to be using them to, you know, it's well documented. You can use them to answer specific questions. For example, if I want to know information about all of my accounts and all of ops at the same time, which is probably an outer join, so you design a big data set and then when you build a dashboard and you're locking it down from exploration perspective, for example, you understand what kind of metrics you're going to use, right? For, you know, average of the account or amount of the opportunities and so forth. So whatever the join you use, in this case, you are leveraging it in a big data set, but also you're understanding it, uh, the, the structure before you're building that dashboard. And uh, within the same context, if you're dealing with very large data sets, individual large base data sets, you might uh, consider having one data set instead of many on the dashboard just to kind of maybe enhance the performance or make the dashboard designer experience a little bit less complicated from SAC column binding and focusing just to uh, deduce the metrics and the different queries where you have just again one data set makes things much more simpler on that dashboard. And um, in conclusion, in conclusion, this is pretty much it. Like um, all of these tools are available for you, whether it's lookups, single or multi-value, the joins are available, just and they are very powerful. Um, the argument or best practice is to have those base data sets and if you want to use joins, absolutely go forward and use them. But just remember to document what is happening with those data sets, have some descriptions, and whoever is building the dashboards and the charts and the, and the metrics, just to understand that, again, if, if there's joins involved, there could be duplications, and the typical metrics might change, for example, from some amount to average amount, or using some compare table and so forth. With that, I'm going to leave you with this slide or just screenshot um, some of the appendix. So again, in the training files, we've added the, um, the files that you saw, those uh, three sample uh, data sets, the uh, opportunities, the accounts, and the cases. You CSV, you can download them. You can follow what we did in this video from a lookup perspective, sorry, from a recipe perspective to explore the joins and kind of compare with what you have here. Um, the typical academy videos again are the same channel and some of the typical help main links and also the trailblazer group and the badges and that's it for this chapter